Zoom's record function and capture all this. So I'd like to take us to slide two and just talk about a couple of things that I noticed when I was doing this myself. Um, I looked for cards first that looked like they were answers. And I saw these four right away. 51 equals X, X equals negative 12, X equals 52 and X equals 66. And then I realized that these were probably cards after doing the first slide, I realized that like three or four cards were going together, right? <clears throat> so when I looked, like I see this one here and it says X divided by six plus four equals 15. And then I also see this one here that says X divided by six equals 11. And I'm realizing when I'm looking at those two that they both have X over six. And so I'm wondering if they're related to each other. So with your dry erase, if you'd like to do this with me, you can, or you can just watch. Francis, I hope you're able to see, I just switched. I'm gonna guess I have to change the screen. There we go. Great. <clears throat> I'm thinking these two are related because I saw this and this and they looked the same to me. So now I wanna see, is the rest of the problem the same just written different ways? Can I get an 11 out of this four and 15? And I'm seeing some heads nodding. I know some of you did fine with this, but others just wanted us to talk through the fractions. So I just wanna walk through this. Let me erase the second one here. Remember, whenever we're trying to solve equations, <clears throat> if we've got a plus or a minus without, um, a plus or a minus, we wanna do the opposite and zero it out, right? When we're multiplying or dividing with the variable, we often are trying to get an invisible one. So I'm looking for a zero here and an invisible one here. I'm gonna start with this. And when I do, I get X divided by six plus zero is equal to 11. <clears throat> so now I know that those two cards do go together. And I've got too many screens now. I'm not sure what I'm showing. This is what I want. What I don't know is what they're equal to, but I know that these two cards go together. We have now gotten to the place where <clears throat> we've got this fraction is equal to a number. And I wanna show you something about that fraction that I think is not always clear. Francis, you can see the dry erase now, right? Yes. Great, thank you. I could rewrite this x over six as one six times x equals 11. Think about what I'm just doing there. All I'm doing is making the one visible. It's really right here. And why is that important? Because when we're dealing with fractions and we're trying to turn them into that invisible one, we need to do the reciprocal. And the reciprocal of this is six over one. Right? And if I'm doing that to one side, I have to do it to the other. I'll erase this now. <clears throat> six times one is six. One times six is six. That X is still there, whether it's on the numerator or next to it is equal to 11 times six 
over one. There's really two invisible ones there that we normally don't show. The first one is right here. The other one is right here. Two different forms of one, the six over six is one. So then when I go back to my screen, I now want to put these two cards with this x equals 66. And I even put it at the bottom because really this is the whole problem in order. This is where I started. This was my next step. This was my final step. The other problem that I saw that a lot of people asked me about was this one with the sevens. And when I look at cards to see if they match, I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way here. I think that this card and this card go together because we have two over seven X and we have a denominator of 14. And this one has two over seven X and a denominator of 14. So let's switch over so I can work through this one. Let me just write it down real quick before we switch screens. In this case, my first move is gonna to have to deal with that one seven. It's being subtracted, and so I need to do what with it? I wanna add it because I'm trying to get a zero. A negative one seven plus one seventh is gonna give me a zero. The problem is, and here I am as your math teacher, truth confession, I am not fond of working with fractions. They just have so many rules to them. I can't just add 3 fourteenths and 1 7. They have to have a common denominator, right? This side works because I can see that's going to become a zero, but I need to convert this fraction into a fraction with a 14 as a denominator. So it's going to end up being 2 over 14. Right now, now that I've got equivalent denominators or, or like denominators, I can add them together. I always do this, you guys. Please do this as you're doing your work. Here's my original. Here's the change I'm making. Underneath the line is my new simplified place where I'm going to have to look for the next step. <clears throat> what am I left with? 2 over 7x equals three over, or five over 14. Because three fourteenths plus two fourteenths gives me five fourteenths. And here we are still dealing with fractions, not my favorite thing. I want to get a one in front of this X, don't I? What am I going to have to do to turn that into a one? We're gonna multiply it by its reciprocal. And since we're doing that to that side, we have to also do it to this side. Seven times two is 14, two times seven is 14. So we get 14 over 14 X, which is really like saying one X, when I'm gonna make it invisible, is equal to, Five times seven, 14 times two, I'm going to tell you in algebra, we don't do a whole lot of uh, converting fractions. That alone is good enough as an answer, but it can be reduced, can't it? I could divide 35 by seven and I would get five. And I could divide 28 by seven and I would get four. 
And that's why when you look at the, the activity from yesterday, it shows, we now know these two go together. Where's, here's my answer card. Do you see what it says there? Now, when I was pulling out the answer cards and I saw like X equals negative 12, I didn't notice this one right away because there was so much stuff on the card. It didn't look finished. But once I finished the problem, then I was like, oh wait, there was that one that had an or. Because it's showing you can either say 35 over 28 or five over four, they're both right answers. <clears throat> Before I stop, I wanna show you one more thing. There is a shortcut for this. And since I'm not a fan of fractions, anytime I can find a shortcut with fractions, I wanna try to learn it. So I'm gonna rewrite this, so there's space to show you. Except I need to see those cards again. What was it? It was 5 fourteenths times or seven over two. <clears throat> okay. And as we saw, this equaled 35 over 28. And then we divided out seven over seven and we got five over four. You can divide out the seven over the seven before you multiply. This is where the shortcut is. If I take this seven and divide it by seven, I get one. If I take this 14 and divide it by seven, I get two. I just divided this by seven over seven. This number got taken out here. So because I've got one in the numerator and one in the denominator, I can do it before I multiply. Five times one, two times two, it's just a shortcut. They both do the same thing. Both of them, I divided out seven over seven. This way I did it before I multiplied and this way I did it after when we reduced the fraction. Make sense? It's called factoring. We'll talk more about it later in the year. So with that, we have about a half an hour and I have our first, I'm gonna put this in Skyward assignment. And we're not gonna be done with it today. I thought we might be this morning, but third period always gives me a better sense of how long things take. Um, I wanna show you what the slides look like. I see a lot of you are already there. It is in Google Classroom. If you want me to send you the link, I can, I can, but I think most, it's probably faster for you to click on Google Classroom. I'm looking at these names is making me realize I have not done attendance. Again, anybody talk to Tian? Is he okay? Oh, happy birthday, Tian. Selena and Gadir are gone. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to talk about what this should look like as you're working today. You're going to see a page that looks like this. There will be a problem here. There will be a space to type in your answer. The variable equals whatever number you find. This is where the important part is happening. And there's two or three ways you could do this today. I need to see your work. Your work is what I'm giving you credit for when I look at Skyward. If you make mistakes, but I can see your work, you're still getting full points, all right? If you are not great 
at using the trackpad or mouse or whatever you do, you can use paper. If you use paper, your name has to be on it. Then you need to clearly show me that this is number two, number three. Like this is problem. It's our first problem we're working on, but it's slide two. So we'll just call it number two. Does that make sense, everyone? I've got a mouse here that I'm really comfortable with, but I'm just not great with using their drawing tool. Some of you might be really good at it. There also is a typing tool you can use where you could type in your work. Or you can use the pen here and I'll write mine so you can see how bad these can look. I'll bet yours is better. That's a bad too. I wanna see the problem and then I wanna see the step you're taking. Just show me step-by-step step as you're going. I will tell you your classmates in third uh, probably got to number four and they had about five minutes less than you to work. So if you guys are getting to three or four or five, you're right on pace with them. Okay. Any questions? Oh, yes. So I told you there's multiple ways. I need to see the work, right? So if you're going to use a dry erase, feel free, but then capture that dry erase work either onto paper or into Desmos. You're going to type the answer into Desmos no matter what, but it's the work I'm going to be grading. Fair? Okay. 